Callaway. I'm a marine ecologist here at Swansea University and I want to talk to you about the flat oyster or the native oyster. We have a number of quite rare and precious specimens here in our collection, but to be fair, the oyster isn't one of them. You could just go down to our local beach in Swansea and you will find a, a number of oyster shells. They used to be extremely common in Swansea and all around the Welsh coast really. They were overexploited, overfished at the end of the 19th century, in the early 20th century. They suffered, the population suffered from um, wastewater, from domestic and industrial wastewater pollution and also from a disease. However, up until today we can still find oysters mostly in sublittoral areas, so in areas that are constantly submerged in water and because we have the really high tides we can also find them in at low spring tides in the intertidal area. The two shells are connected by an adductor muscle and this is a, a particularly strong muscle that um, holds the shells together. If you were to eat a, an oyster you would have to prise this muscle from the shell you can see the scar or a mark where the adductor muscle connects to the shell in the center of, of the shell. It is like an oblong oval on both the left and the, the right valve. Oysters or the research on oysters contributed very early on to our modern understanding of ecology. In 1877, a zoologist called Karl Möbius wrote a book which loosely translates about the, the, about the term biocenosis. And it is a book about oysters and the oyster fisheries. But in his book, he describes that, he describes the community of different species, the biocenosis, that is associated with oysters. When he did his research on oysters, he found that whenever he found a healthy oyster bank, he would find a plethora of other species associated with these oysters. Thanks for watching Zoo Tell and tune in to our next episode.